These videos are strictly only for entertainment and educational purposes. I do not encourage or endorse to any of the behaviors of the people I am talking about in my videos. Born on June 20, 1956, Marie Elizabeth Spanhake was 19 years old when she moved from Cleveland, Ohio to Chico, California to be with her fiancé, John Baruth. For about a month, she lived a peaceful existence in her new town. Spanhake found work as a camera store model and settled into the apartment she shared with Baruth. But everything changed on January 31, 1976. Spanhake and Baruth got into a fight while at a local flea market. Furious, Spanhake decided to walk home, even though she was still unfamiliar with the town. Two days later, when Spanhake still hadn't shown up at their apartment, Baruth filed a missing persons report. Though they'd had a fight, he told police that he was worried because his fiance hadn't taken any of her belongings, including her clothing, her suitcases, or even her toothbrush. Police briefly considered Baruth a suspect in Spanhake's disappearance. One person told them that Spanhake had wanted out of the relationship, and Spanhake's mother said that Baruth had been into drugs. But Baruth denied hurting her, and was cleared as a suspect after he passed a polygraph. As time went on, the mystery of Marie Elizabeth Spanhake's fate deepened. No one had any idea what could have happened to her until 1984, when a woman named Janice Hooker went to the police and told them she wanted to turn in her husband, Cameron. Janice had met Cameron when she was 16 years old in 1973 and married him two years later. But Cameron had an obsession with bondage that Janice didn't like, and she agreed that he could acquire a girl who couldn't say no to act out his fantasies upon. Until August 1984, Janice explained, they'd had a captive named Colleen Stan, whom they'd kidnapped while Stan was hitchhiking in 1977. For seven years, her husband had imprisoned Stan in a coffin-like box for up to 23 hours a day, taking her out on occasion to rape her and subject her to tortures like whipping, burning, and electrocution. Though Janice had aided Cameron in kidnapping Stan, she eventually helped their captive escape, and she went to the police shortly afterward because she feared that her husband would hurt her and her children. I never felt safe to act out my escape plans until his wife came to me and said, We have to get out of here, Stan later told CBS News. But both Stan and Janice told the police something else too. They said that Stan hadn't been Janice and Cameron's only captive. The first girl, Janice told police, had been named Marie Elizabeth Spanhake. As Janice Hooker tells it, she and her husband abducted Marie Elizabeth Spanhake on January 31, 1976, as Spanhake made her way home after fighting with her boyfriend. The couple offered her a ride, but when Janice opened the door to let Spanhake out, Cameron grabbed Spanhake and pulled her back into the car. Janice told police that Cameron fastened a specially made box over Spanhake's head, which made it hard to move or see. They drove home where Janice claimed she tried to comfort the hysterical Spanhake by promising her that Cameron wouldn't hurt her. But it was a lie. That night, Cameron took Spanhake to the hooker's basement and suspended her from the ceiling by her wrists. When she wouldn't stop screaming, he allegedly tried to cut her vocal cords. Unable to speak, Spanhake was somehow able to convince Cameron to give her a pen and paper and untie her long enough to write a note which read, I'll give you anything you want if you let me go. But Cameron had no intention of releasing his captive. Janice told police that Cameron shot Spanhake twice in the abdomen with a pellet gun and strangled her to death. Then, Janice helped Cameron wrap Spanhake's body in a blanket. They put her corpse in their car, drove out of town, and buried her near Lassen Volcanic National Park. Janice later told police that she only knew Spanhake's name because she'd seen it on her ID. A little over a year later, after Janice and Hooker abducted Stan in May 1977, their new victim spotted a photo of another woman. The photo was kind of like a school portrait type picture, Stan said. Every time I crawled in and out of this box, I could see that picture. Was that woman Marie Elizabeth Spanhake? Though investigators were never able to find her body, and Janice Hooker was never charged with any crimes because of her cooperation with the police, some are certain that Spanhake was Janice and Cameron's first victim. 
Officially, however, Marie Elizabeth Spanhake remains a missing person and not a murder victim. Despite the testimony provided by both Colleen Stan and Janice Hooker, her fate remains unknown. Thank you for watching this video. Please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments down below. Don't forget to like the video and also subscribe for more. See you next time. Bye.